Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> Let's comment on the Rings top 10 list of top Olympians who became successful professional fighters. Right? The list is an eye-opener because, of course, Oscar De La Hoya owns Ring Magazine, but this list is so exclusive that, according to the writers at the ring, he's not on it, right? Let's talk about the 10 who are, right? Number one is Muhammad Ali. Number two is Roy Jones Jr. Number three is Ray Leonard. Number four is Pernell Whitaker. Number five is Vladimir Klitschko. Number six is Floyd Mayweather Jr. Number seven is Lennox Lewis. Number eight is George Foreman. Number nine is Joe Fraser. And number 10 is Evander Holyfield. Now, I understand that many of these guys are our heroes. But let's talk about specific picks. Let's critique them. Let's talk about actual talent. Right, Not the fame that they had. I'll agree that Muhammad Ali fought in some of the biggest fights in history. Right, There's not just the fight against Joe Frazier, the first one, which was arguably the biggest event in boxing history. Two unbeaten champions fighting for the heavyweight championship. But of course, there is the rumble in the jungle against George Foreman. Not to mention the thriller in Manila, the ultimate fight against Joe Fraser. Right? Now, I understand that Ali had a spectacular career. But if you close your eyes for a moment, do you recall Ali ever landing big time body punches on anyone? You know, Ali was predominantly a headhunter. Let's not lose sight of that fact. Right? Because if you don't go to the body, how could you be considered the absolute best? Let me point out, too, I have the same problem in a different context with Joe Lewis, my father's favorite fighter. Because simply put, Lewis's foot speed is so slow. How would he cope against an Ali who was very quick around the ring? Right, well, on this list, Pernell Whitaker, great defensive fighter, really the standard defensively. But Pernell didn't have offense, right? Certainly not the kind of offense that Floyd Mayweather, another great defensive fighter, who ironically goes to the body, has. Right, how could you know, if Purnell's defense is a 10, and if his offense, let's say 5, is average, if his offense is a 6 or a 7, and I'm being generous, how could he surpass Floyd Mayweather, who defensively is really a 10, and offensively is certainly higher than a 6 or a 7, right? I would argue that Floyd Mayweather belongs ahead of Purnell. Whitaker, even though Whitaker to me is the gold standard defensively. Also, Roy Jones Jr. Now, I'll agree, I'll say Roy Jones was the best fighter I saw in the 1990s, but he wasn't the best technician, right? Roy Jones relied on his legs an awful lot. Up close, he was never really Bernard Hopkins, he was never. Roberto Duran up close, right? He was a gifted guy who was able to have an unorthodox stance, right? Unorthodox game where he was able to stay outside, use hand speed, a concussive left hook, right? And athleticism. But, you know, I really do have to ask the question, can we put a Roy Jones ahead of a consummate technician like, let's say, a Floyd Mayweather, right? Let me, let me just say this too, 
Vladimir Klitschko. Do any of us watching this video really believe that Vladimir Klitschko can fight inside? I mean, isn't there a reason why Vladimir Klitschko never gave Corey Sanders a rematch? Right? I would argue Vladimir Klitschko, as good as he is, isn't even the best fighter in his own family. Right? Vladimir Klitschko, in addition to getting stopped in a title fight, the Corey Sanders fight, and getting stopped before that, right, Ross Purity. Vladimir Klitschko also has been down in other fights, Sam Peter, right? And so, given the fact that Vladimir Klitschko is a bit mechanical in the ring and doesn't really fight that well inside, how could you place him over, let's say, not just a Floyd Mayweather, but let's say a Lennox Lewis, right? I mean, Lennox Lewis beat the best Klitschko, in my opinion, right? Lennox Lewis, defensively, in my opinion, is better than Vladimir Klitschko, right? Now, I'll agree, Lennox Lewis himself got dropped twice. No question about it. But does anyone here believe that Lennox Lewis would get dropped by Sam Peter? You know, also, if you look at Lennox Lewis's Olympic resume, didn't he make the semifinals in the 84 Olympics before getting gold in 88? So I just think that Vladimir Klitschko being ranked ahead of Floyd Mayweather, right? I'd like to know what part of Vladimir Klitschko's game is better than Floyd's game, right? The fact that Vladimir is ranked ahead of Floyd and Lennox Lewis that's a bit of an uh, uh, eye-opener to me. Let me go one step further. Evander Holyfield. If we're going to talk about his pro career, you know, his pro career actually is greater than his heavyweight career. This is a guy who was a champion before he got to heavyweight. Right? Doesn't that matter? Right? Let me go one step further. You know, as a heavyweight. This is a guy who beat Mike Tyson twice, right? This is a guy who went the distance with Lennox Lewis twice. This is a guy who actually beat Riddick Bowe in the rematch. Now, maybe our memories are a little bit short, but has Vladimir Klitschko really had a better run as a heavyweight than Evander Holyfield? I mean, has Vladimir Klitschko fought anyone on Mike Tyson's level twice? I understand Mike Tyson wasn't prime Tyson when he fought Holofield, right? I would argue prime Tyson is the Tyson from the late 1980s. But at the same time, you know, who exactly has Vladimir Klitschko fought who is... You know, even on the level of Mike Tyson, please. You know, I would argue the best, biggest fight Vladimir Klitschko has had to date was his fight against David Hay. Right? But even that performance really isn't the same as Evander Holofield stopping Mike Tyson in their first fight. Anyway, it looks like I have a business call here that I need to take. We'll pick this up. In fact... YouTube Nation, I want you to pick it up in the comments to this video. The way I would restructure this list is simply um, Floyd Mayweather needs to be higher than Vladimir Klitschko, Pernell Whitaker. Um, I would say that as a technician, right, I would pick Floyd over Ali. I'll agree Ali for social reasons, Vietnam War, um, the Times, uh, probably a bigger historical figure than Floyd. But certainly Floyd Mayweather, in my opinion, as a technician, is better defensively than Ali. Certainly he's better to the body. Also, you know, Judge Floyd in his prime, not now, Judge the Floyd who took out Diego Corrales. 
right? As for Ray Leonard, all I could say is, as I see it, Ray Leonard at number three on this list, that's about right, might even be underrated because in terms of talent, you simply can't have better upper body movement than Ray Leonard. Ray Leonard was a combination puncher, a bit more fluid than, let's say, a Floyd Mayweather. I thought Ray was a big time fighter. Anyway, let me go take this call. Thanks for watching.